Welcome to the Mike on Much Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Veerman. I'm here with my friend and trusted producer, Max Kerman, as well as our pop culture aficionado, Shane Cunningham. Uh, again, this is a, this is the second, uh, I guess, episode of our podcast that is not like our podcast. Uh, before we get to our topics of the day, Max and Shane, uh, I guess we have some business to take care of, and that is, I guess, the name of whatever this thing is going to be. Again, we're recording them on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, twice a week, and then you'll still be getting uh, the main uh, podcast once a week as well. Yeah. Well, we put the poll up, mm-hmm. and it seems like freedom is not winning. Brunch <laughs> is winning. But that's very predictable because, as I thought, and even someone commented on this, uh, they're voting before they've listened to the episode. So, so someone even commented, I believe her name is uh, Olivia Carvalho. Mm-hmm. She said, I voted for brunch, but after listening to the episode, freedom's really grown on me. Uh. Interesting. I guess that gets to the idea in creative work that it's like – it's like when you see a sequel. Do you need the context for the name to work? Mm-hmm. Meaning, like, if somebody just looks at the name Freedom and they dislike it, they shouldn't have to listen to episode one of the Freedoms in order to not think the name is stupid. No, but well, what we do pretty well, I think, in episode one is we explain why Freedom might be potentially better because it's worse. Mm-hmm. And sometimes things are better because they're more interesting. Fair. And that was like Stanley Kubrick's whole method of filmmaking. He, he didn't necessarily want... <laughs> no, it's a pr- good comp because I think Freedom as a name for a podcast is definitely comparable to Stanley Kubrick's greatest works. <laughs> well, well, Stanley Kubrick would always say uh, a, about something, like people would complain something wasn't realistic or uh, a shot was yeah. different, and he would say, well, it's not because it's better, it's because it's more interesting. Yeah. And that's why I think Freedom is definitely the mo- more polarizing and more interesting and ultimately funnier choice to go with. Yeah, but I, I'm not going to fight for freedom. The, like, I mean, the tw- <laughs> <laughs> which has been your lifelong stance. The, the Twitter poll. <laughs> I'm <laughs> political. The oppressed fuck. Okay. No, but the, the, <laughs> the Twitter poll can decide it, or we can go with another one. Just how, how do you feel about it? This is the problem with democracy, you know? It's mm-hmm. like you can't always trust it. Um, I mean, I personally like freedom liked freedom yesterday and then i was swayed i was like okay maybe there's something simple who swayed you well the poll swayed me okay well so currently for our listeners the poll is is uh so brunch is sitting at 57 percent in favor of free dumb is sitting at 31 percent and other is sitting at 12 (laughs) percent other would mean like uh, because people suggested names such as yappy hour uh mike on much hangover brunch uh Yeah, we got some not suggestions. Not bad. They just added the word hangover to no, brunch. I mean, <laughs> no, there's a couple other good ones. Bits and bites, bits and bites, sound bites, the tea, the, the chat. The tea's not bad. Or I had the tea chat. in one of my options that I didn't read. You yeah. said it in the la- You did say it in oh, the okay. podcast yesterday. Um, That's actually not bad. Well, this thing, it doesn't have to be a closed book. I get Shane's argument, too, because like anything, you mentioned yesterday Red Hot Chili Peppers or Foo Fighters or Bare yeah. Naked Ladies. These are, these are names that are sort of on their face, very dumb, but they... They're sticky. Yeah, exactly. Do we need a sticky name, though, because it's already part of the brand, or do we just want something that, like, is a little less... Do, do we care, by the way, about the J- Jim... Was his name? The Jim Jeffries. Jim Jeffries. Oh, yeah, thing. that was kind of a, a little bit of a the bombshell bus- finding yeah. that out. <laughs> do you want to explain that? Yeah, yesterday I was talking to Webby D as we were ready to sort of launch this and let people know uh, uh, that we were doing this. And he was like, yeah, because I was explaining the names. He hadn't listened to the episode yet. I'm like, he's like, what's it going to be called? I'm like, ah, oh, we're thinking brunch or freedom. And I explained, he goes, oh, huh. I'm like, what? It's like, well, that's that's Jim Jeffrey's last special. Uh, and I was yeah. like, oh, that's the problem I didn't with, know with that. album titles or everything. They've all been done before. They've all been used. So, which, which in which case, I just go. It's all just, been done. Should we call it that? Done? Yeah. Michael Much, it's all been done. After the Great Bare Ladies. What song. about Michael Much Afternoon Snack? Because these will come out in the afternoon. Uh, and it's kind of like not a full pod. It's more like a snack. We've made jokes about snack well before. Up. Yeah. It's like yeah. these will come out in the afternoon on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. It's not quite the full experience of the pod with the dessert and the guest and the opening. What 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 if we stop After releasing? Delight? I, I, I'm not okay. saying against it, but just designating a time. What if sometimes we release them in the morning or something? Like, like what if we get so on point? Erica is uh, Erica the shaking her head. Cuttings. Erica, do you think <laughs> these will ever be released in the morning? Probably not. Why no. not? You're fast. I can be sometimes, but not all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but to the to the note of afternoon. Erica just grabbed the f- uh, mic. What about away, <laughs> away from Mike just <laughs> for the listeners? <laughs> <laughs> what about Mike on much happy hour? It's oh, coming out around. That's not bad. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. That appeals to some of you're our talking, sensibilities. You're talking for about an hour. <laughs> Mike's eyes just lit up. It's just the worst happy hour. Make him feel good. That's my favorite time my, of day. My only happy problem. Hour. My only problem with designating times and saying hours or in the morning or afternoon delight is it might not always be an hour. So like yesterday, our first one was 40 minutes. Yeah. 
But it might not always be free or dumb. <laughs> we might start charging. That, and we could get if smart. If it gets to that, that's the dream. Like, <laughs> but we'll change the name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We rich. Uh, it's, it's, it, these are all great points. You know what? We should uh, maybe run another poll. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we, could, because I think people, as you said, need to listen to the episode. Well, the, poll, the beauty of the poll is yeah. it's up for six days. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, we'll. we'll I do like it. the idea of running another poll with like six options, though. Yeah. True democracy, you know, instead mm-hmm. of like this is the problem. It's a two party system. Two, you know? Thank you. I was just going to get to that. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't we all come up with? Uh, there's three of us. Well, there's four of us. There's enough Eric good ideas. We just I'll, I'll, off right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. It, it, maybe you. You're the one that's not come up with a name, Max. If we come up unless with you're, two you're ide- representing brunch. If we come up with two yeah. ideas each, though, that's six, right? Yeah. How many? Uh, I don't. I mean, it doesn't have to be from me, though. I just why. Because I don't know. Why do you want to avoid work, Max? <laughs> well, I'm just saying there's other good ideas out there. I'll, I'll have a think on it, but there's enough good ideas. It's just a matter of us voting well, on it. Well, look at other good ideas okay. and steal two of your favorites. Okay, I'll do that. Also, and a brunch podcast already exists. I mean, of that course seems it typical, does. though. Yeah. Um, but this isn't a brunch names. podcast. This is the name of a segment. It's different. Mm. No, I know, but I guess philosophically. I'm not married to brunch. I certainly don't think we need to use brunch. Okay. But I, I do like something like happy hour is pretty good. And with... to. With freedom, we're not adding the B like Jim Jeffries did. Mm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, let's let's carry on. Let's we, we got important. And should we to. should we have a mic for Erica? This might be again something for uh, yeah. Twitter I think we poll. should. I think we should. We'll get her on the mic. Because that's mic. what makes it a little different as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay. Should we do that right now? Uh. Yeah. I think we should. Because she so gets too. grabby when you start giving it. To you know what? You bit. grab a mic. I'm gonna grab uh, some uh, stuff from our sponsor oh. Perrier. Okay. Uh. So we'd like to thank our sponsor Perrier. Uh, for providing the finest bubbly water in the game. I was very surprised to find out that Perrier had put that four-pack in the fridge. Yeah, they did. Wow. So um, Four of us, four of those drinks. Yeah, perfect. This ain't your father's water, Perrier. Is that they're saying? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay, so we will put up a poll with uh, multiple names for uh, our listeners to uh, vote on again. We'll keep the we'll keep the vote going uh, and make it a true democracy with more than just two options and a, a third uh, independent candidate like Ross Perot. That's a really timely reference. Um, guys, what's going on? Well, we have a list of topics today. We Producer do. Max came Yeah, through. so I, I was working hard last night mm-hmm. <laughs> thinking about what we should talk about. Um, Chad Kruger? Chad Kruger's on it. Is it Kruger or Kroger? I think it's Kroger. Kroger. Um, he's on it. Bieber's on it. Also, the new Ontario license plate uh, slogan is on it. Some local politics. Yeah. Before we get there, though, I got to say, I don't feel particularly free right now. I'm uh, chained to this early day that you guys have signed me up for. (laughs) Did you go (laughs) drinking last night? No. I went to bed at 1130. But honestly, I don't know. Like, this is going to make me feel very, you know, removed from the common man. But waking up at 8 o'clock every day and taking the subway, I know it's only 15 minutes, but... In, in that whole rat race, you get, people have to do. It's a nightmare. It's tough. Welcome to our world. Yeah. Oh my god! You, you see that five o'clock alarm staring Jesus, you down. Jesus, I don't know how people do it. I'm, I, I know I'm always like uh, singing the praises of public transportation, how it's the best. But I realize I only ride it like at my own convenience <laughs> <laughs> on, on rush Max hour really time. understands the working man. <laughs> One day he has to get up at fucking eight thirty. Well, it's two days in a row now, and it's killing <laughs> oh, me. What a nightmare for you. Uh, you have led a very charmed life. I have. A, I yeah. feel like you're like for most of your adult life since you've left university, you've essentially just sort of like arkells it. I, I have. You uh, get up when you want. You go to sleep when you want. Yeah, so I was so tired yesterday during the day. Because you had to get up early. I had to get up early. <laughs> Maxie needs a nap. I did. And then uh, Lauren and I went to uh, the movies last night. We, we went. To, she was like really excited to see. She wrote her final exam. Um, and she was really excited to see the movie Aftermath. Do you know that movie? No. It's uh, Keira Knightley and Alexander Skarsgård. Oh. Um, it's, but it, it's a classic Keira Knightley period piece movie. It takes place after the World War II. Oh, I, I thought it was going to be like a post-apocalyptic like science fiction movie. No, I, I no. Was it was like far a less high school film. <laughs> no. Like after math class. <laughs> <laughs> it's just English? No, no. Alexander Skarsgård plays like a, a German dude, and she, she's British, and they have like this uh, love affair. Mm-hmm. Lauren, it's two very attractive people. Lauren loves Alexander Skarsgård. And um, she was like so excited. She, she, as soon as he came on the screen, she, he, she starts giggling like like a schoolgirl. Wow. And uh, anyway, I fell asleep immediately in the movie. <laughs> and, I, and at one point, I guess I had my hat, head 
tilt back and I told her, and she knows this rule. If I ever fall asleep in a movie, do not wake me up. I love falling asleep in, movie, in the movies. <laughs> it's like my favorite thing to do. And if someone wakes me up during the movie, I get furious with them. If they, if they think they're doing me a favor by giving me a nudge to wake me up, I'm like, no, I paid good money for this. And uh, I just, I guess at one point I went, Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it was during a very quiet part in this, in this like very tense, dramatic. Was it a sad part though, where people thought maybe you were crying? <laughs> no, I think it, like not much was happening. Um, and uh, anyway, did Lauren break the rule? Because uh, that's quite embarrassing. No, she, she she thought it was actually the funniest thing ever. She like she kind of nudged me and, and couldn't stop laughing. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think she's been pretty let down actually because she has like kind of three crushes. Um, Leo, Brad, '90s Brad Pitt, and Alexander Skarsgård, uh, which I look, I don't look at anything like any of those guys. You know, you kind of hope that she liked like a curly haired hot dude. I yeah. find that like 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 Danica, my wife, like all of her crushes, none of them look like me. So I'm like, yeah. how did you end up here? I don't know, maybe lack of options, but uh, ultimately it's like, <laughs> it's, her well, it's always like tall guys uh, <laughs> with like blonde hair and uh, well, this piercing blue eyes. I, I do feel a little, because because like my type would probably be someone like that looks like Lauren, mm-hmm. but her type is not me at no. all on any level. What, what's your type? Like like, blonde, who, like, like who's an actress that you have an affinity for? Um, I don't know. Someone who like, like, you know, someone who looks like Lauren. I mean, what does she I, look like? Well, she, she kind of looks like Kate Winslet. No, sorry, what? the other one, Kate, Kate, uh, the one from Almost Famous. Oh, uh, Kate Hudson. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, just sort of she like, a girl like Kate Hudson. Do you think she has a Kate Hudson vibe? She's in that world. Yeah, like yeah. girl next door, kind of fair skin. Like, but I mean, I like a lot. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't discriminate. I don't discriminate. <laughs> okay. Um, but anyway, um, but she's actually been really let down recently because there is this funny graphic that came out on uh, someone on Reddit put it up with. Um, Leo's dating history because she's loved Leo since she was a teenager. Didn't you guys see Leo at Coachella? We did see him, and None he looked like story. shit. But uh, <laughs> okay, someone's jealous. <laughs> Straight-haired <Guy> bastard. Gets... <laughs> <laughs> um, but he doesn't have to wake up early at all. Basically, someone made this hilarious graphic. We should put it up um, of Leo's. Uh, it's like a, a chart. Of Leo's age, because again, that's a straight line with all the women that he's dated, and he never goes higher than 25. So every yeah. year of his life, it has, right. and, and that really disappointed Lauren. So on the way home, she was like, Alexander Skarsgård, he just likes normal girls, you know, with a good head on their shoulders. You know, he doesn't make a big <laughs> thing about his, his dating life. You know, he's not just dating Victoria's Secret models. You know, he's just, he's just like a, he just fall in love with a normal girl. I'm like, like someone who just graduated or wrote her last exam from nursing school. And, uh, <laughs> Specifically. And then we looked it up and he's only dated like. He's on the same trajectory? Yeah, he's, well, he's, he, I think he goes o- older than 25. Younger def- than 30. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And only like tens, like celebrity actresses. Have you ever seen those, those photos where it's like Leo slowly turning into Jack Nicholson? Like we're basically no. like they have oh, like really? kind of these like hilarious comps because there was a bit there where Leo was kind of as he gets older, he's, you know, putting on man weight. and He had a beard, but it's like his hair was longer and he had it like tied back in a little man. Oh, bun. Well, I remember that. But beard. he kind of had like the widow's peak. And it was like they were showing him and Jack like they both go to Laker games. They both only dated younger women. And it was like basically Leo was slowly morphing into Jack Nicholson. Is Jack Nicholson a good looking man? I think that's a great question. I mean, I don't think I don't know if a Jack Nicholson could become a movie star in the traditional sense this day and age. Yet mm-hmm. he did. Like Gene Hackman and 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 Jack Nicholson were movie stars in the the seventies. Jack's 70s. better than Gene. Gene's not even in the conversation. You mean better looking? Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, uh, Erica, do you have any? Yeah, opinions? you got the mic. I don't know what any of these people look like. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Wait, you don't know who Jack Nicholson is? No, I don't watch movies. Uh, wow. That just blew my mind. Yeah. Whoa. You just that lost shock? You just <laughs> lost Shane, man. Erica, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? You have to be under 18. <laughs> <laughs> how old are you? I'm 22. 22. I'll be 23 in May. Man, those were the days. May what? May 17th. Nice. Who do you share? May 12th. Who do you share really? a birthday with? Yeah. Can join birthday party this year. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we should do it on the pod. Uh, I don't know. What do you mean? Who do like, I share? Like, people find out whose birthday. Like, I have the same birthday as John Lennon. Whoa, that's cool. I We're both know. like October 9th. My daughter has the same birthday as Drake. You must share a birthday <laughs> with someone. You don't know just like off the top of your head who you share a birthday with? No, there's I'm this Jason one other Bates. kid in my high school. Shaney Jason Bates? Jason Biggs from Biggs. American Pie. Max, who do you share a birthday with? Um, Pudge Rodriguez. Bo Jackson. Those are baseball references that when I was a kid I was very excited <laughs> about. Uh, I think those are the only two. Yeah, so, so right now Max and Shane are looking. Bob Saget. <laughs> you share your birthday with Bob Erica shares a birthday and with Bob Saget. these are the years. And all that's the, amazing. And then it's like. 
Leo's age limit. It's very funny. Oh my god! Okay, I didn't so know that. so Max, that's a crazy stat. Max is pulled. You know, guys, we're doing an audio podcast, so yeah, when you we'll, have we'll, visuals, we have to describe them to people. Hey, listen, that's go on Twitter for. and uh, give us a follow, and that graph will. Be this is an in, wow. This is a very um, comprehensive chart. We will post this on Twitter. Yeah, we'll post it on Twitter as yeah. we discuss this. Yeah. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on people? Like, so so Leo dates below twenty five habitually. It would seem. Um, how do you think society views that? Because I feel not like good. you talk to different. Not yeah. good. Well, uh, how do you think uh, the champagne gals view it? Alex hates it. My wife. <laughs> my wife's name's Alex, uh, but she always said I've never dated anyone over thirty. And I was like, yes, I have. And then I thought she about, said about it. you. Yeah, and yeah. I never have dated anyone over thirty. Because we've always broken up, or I've dumped them before they've gotten <laughs> to the age of thirty. Like to be honest, mm-hmm. and then but, but a- Alex, you, you just, weren't thinking of like, oh, thirty's coming up, got to get rid of this. That's, that's not just consciously. Like, and you're, but who and knows? also, you, it's not like you were like forty two. Exactly. Like you were thirty one, or, or like, you're these people yeah. you're dating. Like you were twenty five to thirty one at this point, right? Because when did you meet Alex? Or were you thirty three? 32? I was 33, yes. Okay. But so Alex I guess that's just, three years of dating where you never dated anyone over yeah, 30. Yeah, but that's a pretty small window, I yeah. think. Mm-hmm. And I agree. Yeah. She was being very unfair to me. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> she just turned well, 30. Well, you know, she is young, so cut her some She flat. just turned 30. She's not so young anymore. <laughs> oh, how long? Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was kind of a big deal for her, but not a big deal for me. I think she still looks good. But <laughs> time will tell, right? <laughs> okay. So, so, so I guess what I'm trying to get at is it's like... Um, <clears throat> Is it, is it taboo to date somebody ten years younger than you, or fifteen years younger than you? Like, why? The older you get, the age difference means less. I mean, yeah, obviously, eighty there's a, and seventy doesn't matter. Yeah, or even like forty-two and thirty-one is probably not the biggest deal. No. But why do people have difficulty with a thirty-five-year-old dating a twenty-five-year-old? Is it because they feel like it's purely physical and that there's no way to connect? Which I bet you a lot of people that are dating in a situation like that would say, actually, we do connect intellectually and don't underestimate me as a 23-year-old, let's say. Yeah, I think guys are um, emotionally dumber. Um, and, and so the age difference is actually helpful because, like, I'm six years older than Lauren, but she's much smarter and wiser than me. And, and guys tend to care about if you're established in your particular career field or life or... Like you own a place or you live with your parents. Like guys aren't as picky as that. Whereas, like when picking a partner. Yeah, women are judged a little bit more if you're like I still lived with my mom when I was 25. That's not very appealing to a lot of well, women. You, yeah, but you guys were in a relationship, which is also very Wait, weird. What? I'm kidding. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> that's not your best work, Mike. No, it was a terrible <laughs> job. Max, I'm not used to working this early either, buddy. <laughs> um. But oh wait wait I wanted to uh, for you guys to think who Alex has a crush on oh. Alex my wife oh, oh do you know oh. the answer to this yes I do oh okay uh, actors m- I, I, if I say Dax Shepard no it's uh, Serge Ibaka oh so, so she has a type <laughs> <laughs> uh, Serge Ibaka is a six seven foot, foot yes yeah, <laughs> six foot eleven like a forward for the Raptors who's yeah. with like the uh, biggest the- penis ever. <laughs> Have you you pulled the clip? Yeah, up. Uh, we'll, we won't be we won't posting post it on Twitter. <laughs> well, there's a famous photo. Just of Google Serge Ibaka jogging pants if yeah. you want. He's wearing jogging pants, and it's like All down. Right. To, okay, okay. Yeah. it's big. <laughs> Um, she has a crush on Serge, but she's never seen his face. <laughs> she's still scrolling up. <laughs> she stops there every time it gets to his waist. Uh, okay. Guys, uh, so Max, you're not usually up this early. Yeah. How does it feel? You feel fr- I mean, actually it's good. I you're like good the, now, but you're worried about the back end. Yeah. No. I'm. I'm. You know, when people talk about the grind or the emotional toll it takes, it's just like, man, if I have to sit in another like subway that's like a sardine can, everyone's just, you know, like that's going to take a toll on me over time. I'm soft. I'm very soft. Mm-hmm. So, Is that why you didn't make it through the movies? Because the the grind of yesterday. That's what I'm saying. I didn't right. have my nap in the middle of the day, mm-hmm. and then I was like, I told Lauren, I was like, I'm going to pass out immediately. But yeah, I'll, but I like this actually. This is nice. It gets this me going is nice. early. Yeah, this is good, great. You know, yeah. um, guys, Chad Kroger. So yeah, uh, set it up, Maxi. We, um, I wasn't there, but uh, the SoCan Awards are an annual event. Um, songwriter and, event. Yeah, songwriter event where where people are honored. Um, the Excellence Baranic, in songwriting. Yeah, the Bare Naked Ladies were honored. Uh, I think for their Big Bang uh, theme song. Theme yeah. song. Yep, yep. Uh, annual awards are given out for people who've had good years. I guess Chad Kroger was um, and Nickelback was. Awarded for I don't know if it was a lifetime achievement. Have you award. won a SoCan award? Uh, yeah, we went to this dinner last year. It's a fun night. Yeah. I don't think last time. I don't, last year I don't think they served food. It was just booze at the table, oh, so everybody got pretty lit. Uh, I forget. Um, 
Randy, not Randy Bachman. Um, who's the other one? In uh, the Who, the Guess Who. Oh, oh, oh! Uh, the piano player, uh, Burton Cummings. Yeah, I think Burton Cummings was hilarious last year. He he was kind of the star of the show. But this year's star of the show was Chad Kroger because he had to give a speech and he was. Uh, we, there's a lot of clips on the internet. I don't think you're supposed to film anything in that room. It's it's a non televised event. I yeah. don't know if they even tape it, but it's like this sit down awards dinner sort of like. But thing. we could admit we've pretty much seen the entire scene. Yeah, there's I mean, enough footage out there yeah. that you can find it of Chad Kroger. We all know like half the people in the room uh, that were filming various parts of Chad Kroger's hilarious sure. speech. Sure. And, and some of the reviews were, uh, as people were leaving, this needs to go on Spotify just as an audio track because it was uh, so hilarious. The buzz was coming out of the room almost immediately after the speech. So then when you saw these Insta stories and started putting together the speech, uh, it was... It was something. It did, and he kind of like lived up to his reputation, or he's sort of owning his reputation. As, is his as, reputation uh, being like a? Can you say douchebag? Is that a word? <laughs> I think he's like. A, that, he, but that's the what he calls he's himself. A, he's like an, an antiquated rock star. He's like a throwback guy that would like mm-hmm. throw a, a, a TV out of like a hotel room balcony. I think that's how he mm-hmm. likes to portray himself. But people would consider him to be a douche. Right? I think he embraces that on yeah. some level. I don't know. Like, what, what, what do you think their images of Nickelback? Like they're kind of like well, leather, like jackets, boots, rock guys. They're gonna a lot and yeah, they, yeah, and they definitely kind of come from that time, and I think, and they probably grew up loving Mo- Motley Crue and Metallica. Like they grew up like loving like eighties music, the myth of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. and and they have songs about that. Um, yeah, they like uh, I love the dirt that's on your knees. Yeah. <laughs> good, good did, did you own the box set? <laughs> Kicking your ass will be a pleasure. <laughs> Speaking, this is a total side a side, side story, but uh, our friend Dan Hamilton, um, he used to, back in the day, uh, me, him, and my brother lived together at this house we called Veer Mansion um, that we rented. And uh, Dan, at that time, had never dated a girl, and he had really long hair, and his hair, when it's long, is curly. And it was down to his, like... It had, like, his, the Chad Kruger wave. It looked like Chad yeah. Kruger. From the How You Remind Me video. Yeah. It looked looked like the higher Miami video and Dan was like uh, he was a very timid young man I remember the first date he ever went on I had to roll up his sleeves like three quarters like up his arms because he didn't even know how to do it uh, <laughs> it was a very sweet time but this one time we were at Solanche's this bar in Hamilton and we were all waiting in line there's a huge line and we couldn't get past the line so we're waiting out there for like 20 minutes and it's me my brother Shane is there our pop culture aficionado and Dan but Dan's like about five people in front of us in line and he is talking to like a couple girls that he'd like made friends with in line but we're pretty drunk because in those days you pre-drink before you go to the bar because you don't want spend a ton of money at the bar do you want to take it from here shake no 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 i want i want you to tell it because i was pretty drunk i remember like teasing him mercilessly so i don't know before we went to the bar like the, or the running joke i guess for that summer was basically that his hair looked like chad kroger from the how you remind me video so like you'd always kind of do like a haven't you heard don't hear the lady and if he was like in the kitchen making a sandwich we'd be like making you a sandwich would be a pleasure <laughs> By the way, what Nickelback song is this? I don't even know that one. Kicking your ass would be a pleasure. Oh, yeah. You don't uh, know that one? I forget that one. So yeah. anyway, me, Greg, <laughs> and Shane are set. standing a few feet behind Dan, and he's talking. And then Shane just kind of start, starts kind of heckling Dan. He's like, Jet! Or they'd be like, and he would do that. Like, well, and then he would he would say like, get really pissed at me in line, and I'd go, it's too bad, it's too bad. <laughs> 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 anyway, so that's our Chad Kroger story. So, Chad, but basically, to, yeah, everything Dan would say in response, Shane would have a Nickelback lyric to sing back to Dan from five people back in line, <laughs> and so it was yeah. very frustrating for Dan, but pure comedy for Greg and I. Yeah. So uh, Chad um, takes the mic uh, and he proceeds to make about like an eight-minute speech, um, talking about his kind of rise through the industry. Uh, you know, he he thanks his team, but he also goes on some. It was more of a comedic routine. It yeah, it like, felt yeah. like a stand-up routine. Okay, how, how would you describe your favorite moments? I think so. Here's the thing you have to know: is at the speech, he gets up at the podium, and there is a teleprompter of what he's supposed to say that honors songwriting and the people he wants to thank and all this stuff. And he almost immediately is like, "I'm not reading that shit," or he's like, he decides to sort of go rogue, and he starts kind of like just winging it as if it's a stand-up routine. Mm-hmm. But he he talks about how he was supposed to. He's like, "I was supposed to do uh, press." He's like, and I think uh, Mr. Powers, Tom Power, not Powers, uh, is in the crowd somewhere here, and I want to apologize. He's like, I was supposed to do press early this morning, but uh, I did not because uh, I was unconscious with slobber all yeah, over it's my. Like I woke up drooling. Yeah, yeah. He goes, because uh, I got uh, pretty fucked up last night. Was at the brass rail, and then everybody in the crowd's like, "Woo!" It's like, 
And like, and the funny thing is, like, watching some of the, the 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 footage. Danica, my wife, was with me, and we were laughing. She goes, "I will." Like, the crowd seems to be behind him. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. The yeah. crowd was kind of yeah. into it. Yeah, he did have a charm to him that people that you think that crowd might not typically get into, but he's, they were kind well, of like, I enjoying. Say, it. I liked the speech. <laughs> I want to say that. <laughs> He said he was going on three days of like a binge. Like he was like, "This is day three and this like is yesterday's this day and age, hair." You don't get honesty like that in public. Like it's it's it almost felt like a something that was secretly recorded well, for a movie I guess or it was something. Kind of, but like <laughs> in a conversation he wouldn't want released. But he's just open with all of his like dirty laundry and stuff. I thought it was kind of refreshing. What, what and he was he getting do? laughs. Yeah. The uh, part, one of my favorite parts was uh, just the way he phrased this and his inflection and tonality of his voice when he, he was like, he had kind of like a setup that you could tell he pre-thought this. He's like, you know, sometimes inspiration for a song will come to you at the weirdest times. It could be at a funeral. You're just rocking out on the casket. And he's like, he starts like hitting like wood and like, like rocking like, out on the casket. Well, he didn't say on the casket, but he was hitting the, um, oh, it was, it was a plexiglass podium. Yeah. yeah. And he was hitting it like he was rocking out on a casket and just coming up with a melody. He's like, or you could be in uh, bed with your uh, your lover, your girlfriend, your wife, your boyfriend, LGBTQ. <laughs> <laughs> Like, he was like, I don't get it, but we're in 2019, yeah. and I guess that's what you said. Yeah, oh, he's <laughs> sort of rolling his eyes a bit. Like, and then, and then he gets distracted, and he's looking at the plexiglass podium, and he goes, "Sammy got any Windex? This thing is filthy." <laughs> yeah, he started throwing in ad libs and shit. Oh man, um, it was a, it was something, man. It would have been really fun to be in the room, but I felt like it kind of went like I don't think anybody was like he did at one point was like. Uh, He's like, I know what you, he goes, uh, check out my hair. He's like, it's been a three day, uh, he's like, this is yesterday's hair. You guys think it looks all right? And a couple people are like, woo. And the crowd where he goes, stop it. You guys are like, get this old fucker off the stage. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. guys want to drink. Yeah. <laughs> and then he gave an impassioned speech on how you should let people go to the bar when speeches are happening. Because the like, bar was closed. Like that bar close sign is bullshit. Let people drink. This is our night. Yeah. We made this night. You're that telling might... us not to drink at our night? <laughs> let the people get a fucking drink. That might have been the biggest yeah, like, applause love that. line. Well, and then there was a guy in the crowd and he's like, what was the guy who sang his song? Oh, it was Dallas Smith, who yeah. used to sing in Default, who actually I sat behind on, on the plane to this event. He was flying from Vancouver, and I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm going to the SoCan Awards. But he didn't mention that he was singing. Well, uh, he's like, oh, yeah, Dallas, look at this son of a bitch. He's like, you're a good-looking bastard. Thanks for th singing the song better than I did. And uh, people are like, woo. He's like, you are better looking than me. And the guy yells out something, and he goes, but I got a bigger dick than you. <laughs> <laughs> he's like so crass. He's like, I'm six two. You're five four. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> and he goes, and he's like, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He's five six. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually reminded me of a shame. Yeah. Well, that's what it reminded. It reminded me of when you're kind of drunk and it's like it's like two in the morning and you're just roasting on your friends run, yeah. for no reason. But you're getting laughs and you're seeing how much you can get away with and you just keep going on a roll. But he's on stage giving yeah. a speech. Oh my god! And then he went on about how like uh, so the, the the guy the program director at the Edge would only take. Like, so basically, they wouldn't play the nickel, Nickelback. And he goes, so I hear the guy from The Edge, which is like the big radio station here in Toronto. It's like, uh, wouldn't, they hate your fucking band, they said. So we send him our CD, and I call up, and, you know, he's like, I do this bit. And he's like, luckily, I'm a good bullshitter. He goes, and uh, I, um, I go, hi, this is uh, Steve from the Nickelback camp. <laughs> and he's, like, doing, like, voice work yeah. now in this stand-up routine. And I'm like, but I'm into the story. And he's like... I'm just wondering. I'm wondering if you heard the uh, the latest uh, Nickelback song that we've sent along. He goes, and the guy goes, uh, "I only uh, new. I only do new music on Tuesdays and Thursdays." And so I go, "Oh yes, but I just wanted to see if you got it." He goes, "Tuesdays and Thursdays," and he hangs up. And he's like, "Fuck that guy," or something <laughs> like that. Big laugh because it got laugh. a little awkward. I'm like, yeah. "Oh, where's he going from here?" He's like, "That fucking guy." Yeah. And everyone laughs, and then he looked to the 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 guy behind him, and he's like. You remember that? And the guy goes, <laughs> said no. Head. And he goes, he goes to, to talking about the guy from the edge. He goes, you know how many dicks I had to suck to get this record made? Yeah. And then talking about the program director, he goes, line up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By the way, that was the one part of the story I told you guys yesterday on our way out because we're mm. recording here at our management's office. And um, and I said that specific line, like, you know how many dicks I had to suck? And I guess like the whole office heard me. Oh God! <laughs> just so when oh, I came yeah. back, they're like, what was that story you're just telling me? And I was like, what what story? And well. Didn't a woman walk by too as you were telling another story that was kind of a bad part? And you were like, oh, I was just telling a story. Like yeah. when we were getting in the elevator? Yeah, I think it might have been the same part. Oh, okay. Yeah. But my question, because he has lived such a fascinating life because clearly he's really ambitious. Like the stories of him trying to get his songs on the radio and him calling 
uh, radio stations are legendary. Like he and Ralph James, his his longtime agent, are the guys that like really truly made it happen. And he's also a real student of songwriting. Like whether or not you like Nickelback, the guy has some secret sauce to him. Clearly, completely agree. Yeah, and, and he is a student of it. Like he really approaches it like a science. And and he, was, you know, what I thought one part of the speech was actually quite nice is when he was talking about how um, the audience. The, what? Oh, I, I'm sorry. You're gonna say that the audience knows bullshit. Uh, oh, that. Sorry, but, sorry. No, I was I was just gonna say like this is the feeling you get when you write a melody that you're and it's like that dopamine hit is like is such an incredible feeling. <laughs> you're making it seem like he said that part like uh, so different, but he was like, uh, I don't do coke. <laughs> Fuck you, I don't do coke. <laughs> but, but the point is, it's I assume it's the same dopamine hit you get when you write a song. But you you acted like you broke it down and had some like eloquent moment. <laughs> Like it was Martin Scorsese accepting a lifetime Cecil B. DeMille at the Oscars. No, well, I got past that and I was appreciating the sentiment. Yeah, it was a sweet moment. It was. <laughs> um, oh, man. So, um, but it must be because. You know, he, he comes from, like, the sticks. He's from, like, rural yeah. Alberta. And yeah. I'm sure, like, you know, if your idols growing up were motley crew etc you you'd take on and, and you got a bunch of money relatively young you'd take on that party boy persona but it must be so weird to live in his head because on one hand you're like part of literally the one of the most successful rock bands of all time you are beloved but on the other hand everybody not everybody but half the population seems to think you're like a douchebag and and the worst thing that ever happened to music. you're a walking punching bag yeah. yeah so what that must do to your psyche is so weird and so he seemed and i mean he seemed to take that on as like his persona of well, being douchebag guy. He reminds me of Trump, where he's on the attack and the defense, and he's funny. He, and in his speech, he like he does you know have those qualities yeah. for sure. It's, it, it's just like a fascinating. There's only like a few people that would know what it, what it feels like to be in his shoes, to be like massively. Well, successful. Trump is one of them. Yeah, yeah, Trump, yeah. you're talking about occupying such a unique space where it's like they become so successful that they are famous, have more money they can ever spend, and a certain segment of people. I, like, there's so much adulation and sort of like hero worship, but then these other sort of like circles that they move in, you know what I mean? Tend to like, they'll never be accepted. Yeah. They, they dismiss them. Like he'll never be Dave Grohl. Who's like beloved. Right. Uh -huh. But it's like, he's like, well shit, I've accomplished like, look, like if you compare Just as the much numbers or more like in, in a basketball analogy, it's like, we're both all stars. Like we've both like played the game exceptionally. We're both hall of famers, but how come I'll never be like, how come I'm a, you know, seen this way and Dave's seen that way but he's smart enough to pick up on all this so he's not like aloof where he's like I don't give a shit it's like you said Shane he's like sort of sensitive enough that he's on the offensive and defense because he's smart enough to see the whole playing field mm -hmm. and that's kind of how he approaches it yeah and I always think um, with Nickelback specifically it must be hard to, uh, in some ways to be in that band just be like we just are trying to make like on, like music that we feel is like pretty honest and poppy mm -hmm. and we want to put on a big rock show with, with fireworks and all that stuff and that and that's and we're doing it because that's like the music we grew up on, and a lot of people seem to like it. But we have like all these uh, like snarky journalists just saying you guys fucking suck. And there's like there's article after article written how we're like the worst thing that ever happened to music. It just like I don't know. That would be a very hard thing I think for for some people. Well, but, yeah, I, I mean, feel like their image taints the music, the way Chad is, the way he dresses, sure. the way he looks the way he gives speeches, <laughs> like, <laughs> like all that comes into it. If he was a very humble like. Like, let's say he was a more attractive, humble guy. Mm -hmm. I think they'd have a better reputation. Sure. But I guess you can't get the Nickelback success. Like, have that drive and ambition and wanting to write those kinds of songs and, and be like a, a humble, oh, thanks, guys. Yeah, it's a yeah, certain right. kind of alchemy. It doesn't yeah. work without him being the way he is. Yeah. And I did think he looked good, by the way. Like, I, I, show, I, I showed some of the clips to Alex, and she said that's the best uh, he ever looked. Yeah. yeah. She said Serge Ibaka and... Uh, <laughs> 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 okay, let's move on. Uh, was there anything else about Chad? No, Just uh, congrats on the. Did Congra he win an award, or was he presenting he, an award? No, he won like some lifetime award. lifetime uh, achievement. Award. Yeah, I think you know what? Then if the man wants to take 15, 10, 15 minutes and, and do a thing, good oh, for and him. We enjoyed it. It was great. Yeah. Um, what else is on the docket? Uh, okay, there's two items uh, that we can choose from: uh, Bieber uh, and his April Fool's joke. Oh, see, you just texted me. Okay, we're gonna talk Justin Bieber. And this, but you didn't give me any context to what we're talking about. Did oh, you not look you up the not story? Just, like, look up the story. It's a massive story. I'm waking up at 5 a.m., man. I'm going to bed early. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Bieber, uh, do you want to explain it? Yeah. Essentially, the Justin Bieber um, and Haley Baldwin are married, as everybody knows. Uh, he posted a sonogram of a baby 
um, on April Fools, and he was like, anyone that thinks this is like an April Fools or something, it's not. I could read it verbatim, but this is I'm giving you the Coles notes. Uh, and then everybody's like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And then he posted like another Instagram of uh, Haley Baldwin like holding her stomach like in the hospital, like being looked at by doctors. Then it was like, oh my god, oh my god. And then he was like, it is an April Fools. And then it was the sonogram again, but with a dog's photo on the head of the baby. Am I explaining yeah, this right, right, Max? Yeah. So then everybody's like. So the, I guess what he's saying is we got a dog. We're not having a baby, but I guess our dog is essentially like our baby. Whatever it, it was, it is what he was trying to do. The internet, the sort of like the vocal uh, maybe minority, I don't know, um, said this is the most insensitive thing ever to couples that are trying to conceive. Fertility is like no joke. You shouldn't mess with people like this. Uh. This was sort of the backlash. Have at it, fellas. Did yeah. I explain that no, right, no, Max? That was perfect. Yeah. Erica, so. were you up on this story at all? Yeah. Yeah, I saw. I saw the post. I saw the backlash. Yeah. I believed it too, by the way. I was talking about Lamar. <laughs> I was like, wow, he's that, pregnant. That woke you up. Yeah, I did. Did you, uh, were you excited? I don't think I saw it in order. I think I saw it once he had already posted the dog thing. Uh, so I saw that first and then I realized what had all happened. Do Do you follow him on Instagram? Yeah. Uh, I'm a big Bieber fan. Big JT fan. JB. JB. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, yeah. How about JT? JT too, yeah. Okay. Justin Trudeau? But, but not JN. That's Jack Nicholson. No. Okay. No, no. So what are your guys' thoughts on uh, this post? I- is it offensive that he, what he did? Of, of course not. But to young people, they're always looking, <laughs> like Erica know this, like young people are always looking to be offended, right? Cause well, I don't a, think it was necessarily even young people that were offended. It was, it was Come people, on. I mean, maybe, but it was also probably people um, who are trying to have a baby. No. Or who, who got, no? You, so you think it was just young people? Yeah. <laughs> like I'm in the motherhood blog sphere. Yeah, that's true. I know moms. They don't. They're worried about so much other stuff. Like, like a, a little joke about saying you're pregnant. That's the oldest April Fool's joke ever. People have been doing that every year. There's Is some. It? Uh, oh yeah, every year there's someone know. who posts a sonogram. Like uh, on my Facebook, it's always like three like Jordan Armanis or someone's like here's a sonogram and it'll get a bunch of like likes and boos and I guess, I guess I guess the question is it's like how large of I think definitely people that are trying to conceive and people that have had miscarriages that haven't been able to have a kid or they've come to a certain like term I could see that not being funny to them if the joke was uh yeah we uh, we just unfortunately miscarried our baby and then it was like April Fools we were never pregnant in the beginning or something that would be different but just saying you're pregnant and then being like psych isn't a big deal. No, yeah, maybe. What do you guys think about April Fools in general? Well, wait, wait. I want. Well, Mike say maybe. I want to hear your opinion of it. Well, no. my, my my opinion is I don't personally find it offensive, but I could one hundred percent see how other people would find it like um, offensive. Yeah, and I, and I agree with that. And also to Shane's point, there is probably a lot of sensitive Bieber fans that track his every move and and would be outraged. Well, over I can anything, absolutely kind of exactly. joke. They I can absolutely see why people would be offended by it because yeah. I can see why people would be offended by anything because people are often looking to be offended by something because you sure. want to post that comment to get a bunch of likes because that gives you that uh, dopamine hit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it's definitely... That songwriting yeah. and cocaine uniquely mm-hmm. give it's people... It's like if, if I said, oh, I won a million dollars or I got this job, like I don't think that'd be offensive to homeless people who have trouble getting jobs or other things. This is just a, an innocent joke. So I was reading somewhere that uh, we should cancel April Fool's Day. It's the worst. Yeah. By the way, is that, is that too much of like a John Tesh radio show? Should we cancel <laughs> April Fool's Day? There's a poll out well, there. Who, well, sometimes I feel like with this with this new show, uh, Afternoon uh, Delight, uh, I wonder <laughs> if we're going to, or Happy Hour, uh, I wonder if we are delving into that. Because I'm like, I'm like, is Bieber offensive? Guys, what do you think? <laughs> like this, be- it becomes talk radio. But ultimately, this is what we do I in like pubs. talk radio. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> is everything offensive now? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, listen, like, I mean, I think that like, it's like anything. It's like, I bet you his like legion of fans also just so really wanted him to be pregnant with Haley Baldwin and probably actually had genuine feelings of joy for him. Yeah. They just felt stupid. When they he, felt, yeah, betrayed. Yeah, it's like, come totally. on, I was happy for you. And then that happened. Like, yeah. it's that. And Don't then play they, with Then me. they want to feel like why they can actually be mad. And so they're not embarrassed by why they were, like, hurt. So they jump on, like, sort of a, a cause that's a little bit more, like, altruistic or thoughtful, which is, like, what about people that can't conceive or people that... And, I mean, the mm-hmm. question is you'd have to ask somebody that maybe is going through a, an issue with conception or has had a miscarriage and they would tell you yeah that is kind of like insensitive but i probably see a million things that make me feel bummed out during the day because of the situation i'm in Mm -hmm. and bieber certainly wasn't trying to i wouldn't think he was just trying to say hey this really good thing happened to me gotcha yeah 
And he did. And he did get a dog, which is which is cool. That was he was ultimately trying to get to the reveal, which is that we got a new puppy. I think. Did he get a new puppy? I think that's what happened. Yeah. 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 Who knows with him? This might be a double trick, right? Mm Because people always do those fake proposals. There's a lot of women trying to get married who are having trouble. You know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, All right. Last thing. Last thing on the docket. Um, the Ontario license. Uh, oh, oh, no, no, sorry. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she came in fired I, up. <laughs> the, Mike, explain what, what it is. The way that I understand this uh, current news story is so in this province, um, the politician uh, Doug Ford. Wait, yeah, brother yeah. of Rob Ford, who is the late Rob Ford, who was obviously very polarizing and kind of a pre-Trump Trump and was kind of internationally famous on Jimmy Kimmel and all that. His brother is now a politician here in Ontario, and uh, he has decided to change the slogan of our province because our, our the slogan of our province, I believe, since like 1984, maybe sooner, 82, yeah. 82 yeah. is yours to discover. Ontario, oh. yours to discover. Cla- which is Classy name. It's a great line. Yeah. That's, that's No one had any problem with it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. So he is already, I guess his, his uh, government has started to sort of commission the idea that they want a new, uh, a new saying. So they've started throwing around ideas. And his slogan for his campaign was o- un- like open for business. Because he's very pro-business kind mm-hmm. of. Let's uh, cut government. regulations. Let's get the money moving, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So open for business is his campaign slogan, the way I understand it. So it's already sitting on a sign in Sarnia. So when you come into Ontario from uh, Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Michigan, uh, you see this sign that's like Sarnia, Ontario, open for mm. business. So now the thinking is they want to make this the official slogan of Ontario. That was kind of the first step. Uh, so, you know, on all of our license plate, it says yours to discover. Yeah. It'll now say Ontario, your license plate, and then open for business. Which is theory. a campaign slogan, which is like a partisan campaign campaign slogan. And it's just such a weird thing when it comes to like, I don't know, like where you live and what we truly take pride in like yeah business, our values our values yeah. like like business is just such an a fascinating word to me to like make that the first thing that we discuss it's yeah. like like and before said, it was like keep it beautiful or something like that it's it yeah. just like yeah. a very like generic like wholesome good feeling expression yeah you also discover it also falls in that category but yeah open for business it, it really strikes me and i think the ford government has done this a bunch of times is just like sort of stirring the pot just to kind of mobilize their base and piss off their opponents. And it's... It's the Trump playbook. Yeah, it totally is. But yeah, to, to put it into this like super... Um, in the public domain to this degree where it's going to literally be on everybody's car, that that's a, that's a crazy move. It is. Yeah. Do you think they'll get... Do you think that it will be implemented? I don't know. What the There's already been such that. a vocal opposition. But again, like you said, that's probably... They kind of enjoy a bit of stirring the hornet's nest and getting like everyone on the left all fired up. But, I mean, I can't even imagine people, like, his base is like, yeah, open for business. Like, even they, I would imagine, be like, yours discover is actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what do you think, Shane? Well, I'm not very passionate about license plate slogans, <laughs> but I do think yours to discover is way, way better. And he's just doing this name change to get attention to Ontario. <laughs> it's his wall. Yeah, exactly. It kind of, it kind of <laughs> and it can always that. revert back, right, when the next... Uh, I guess so, him. but it's also a costly thing. He says it's not going to cost anybody any money, but... I don't know, but you have to. Yeah, there's some process that would have to happen. That would, I'm sure. Yeah, don't they make things. license plate in jails? <laughs> <laughs> Do they? Free labor, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they did. That's the old uh, thing you always see in like movies. Yeah, it was stuff. in Blues Brothers, so it right. Mike on Much can be found on Twitter and Instagram at Mike on Much. You can subscribe to the show on any platform that has podcasts, uh, Spotify. Do it.